The hosts of Fox and Friends were not thrilled that the Democratic-led House just passed a $15 an hour minimum wage. Uh, so now they launched into a, uh, a tirade about how working those minimum wage jobs was actually amazing and that you should just shut up and accept whatever you get. Take a look. Uh, like many of you, uh, I had probably about five to seven tip j jobs. Well, I started as a bus boy. I used to do a bus, clear the tables, and we used to rotate washing the dishes. And at the end of the day, you pool your tips. It's the, one of the best jobs you can have when you're breaking in. You don't even expect that check. It's almost a surprise when you get a 60 or $70 check at the end of the week because you work hard, you get great tips, and if you're good, guess what? Other restaurants want you. They will take you off your better jobs. And if your one job doesn't pay enough, Guess what you do? You get another job. That's what you do in your 20s. Having two jobs, part-time jobs while going to school is something people have done since the turn of the last century. And now all of a sudden people want to make that job something you can make a career out of while destroying small businesses. And, and those owners work about 60 hours a week. And now you're telling them their labor force has got to make more maybe than they do? Well, Forget and a minimum it. wage job is not meant to be a career. Of course. It's meant to help you get your start. We were all in high school. We were in college when we had these wait, wait when I was waiting tables. Yeah. Unless you're at a very fine restaurant, most of those people at the fine restaurants, that is their career. Right. But they make tons of money. If you're working at a McDonald's or a, a, a small little restaurant where you're making tips, you're right. If you're nice to the people, you make a lot of money. Absolutely. So what do you other restaurants can hear about correct, you when they want you? Correct. All right, there's a lot of uh, insanity to unpack, right? Uh, but I just got to ask, what kind of world are they living in? This isn't 1985. Things don't work like that anymore. Now, if you would actually work, and, and look, I don't know if Brian Kilmeade literally bust tables. Maybe he did. Maybe Ainsley Earnhardt did. I don't know. But right now, they're incredibly well-paid Fox News hosts. And, and I'll get into how much uh, Kilmeade makes, actually. Uh, but here's the thing. Anybody who's working now... It, it, because the economy is different than it was back then, 20, 30, 40 years ago, right? Things have changed. You ask anybody working in fast food right now in a restaurant, they will tell you that. But see, here's the thing. Who's the guy? Who's having so much fun bussing tables, bussing their ass, that when they get the, tr uh, the 60 to $70 a week check, that they're like, Oh, wow, I got paid for this. I can't believe I'm getting paid for this. I'm having just so much fun bussing these tables and cleaning them off and everything. Oh, what a surprise. 60 to $70 a week. What? <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Really, average rents over, what, $1,400 is the average rent in America? Obviously, that average skews upward because of most people live in big cities like Seattle, L.A., you know, San Francisco, New York, etc. cetera. Uh, but $60, $70 a week, you can't afford a one-bedroom apartment making $60 to $70 a week. That, that, is, that is not very much money. <laughs> I mean, that's insanity. Uh, but okay, so now there's more, right? So now, the, look, they're talking about the tip minimum wage, right? Oh, so, you know, you work at a restaurant, you, you make decent tips, right? And if you don't make enough, well, you just go to a re another restaurant that makes decent tips. O okay, well, uh, do some people make a decent living off, uh, you know, tips? Yeah, some do. As it was mentioned, it's kind of ironic that they, they say this, right? Uh, people at high-end restaurants can make good money off tips, right? Because they're mainly serving rich people. Uh, and I say this is ironic because Ainsley Arnhart, who said that, uh, said... Well, I mean, look, uh, working at restaurants, it's not a career. Being a server, it's not a career. It's for somebody out of high school, unless you work at a high-paying uh, high restaurant, a high-end restaurant. Well, then, of course, it's a career. But there's no difference other than where you're actually working at. <laughs> so basically what she says is that unless you're working for rich people, unless you're serving the wealthy, then you don't deserve a living wage for your work even though it's the exact same work. <laughs> and remember, $15, th uh, $15 an hour is only $30,000 a year. Now, you want to compare that to Brian Kilmeade and his $4 million a year haul for working at Fox News. 
buy and kill means worth eight million dollars now i sure love it there's if there's one thing that i love is when people that are worth millions of dollars tell me uh, how these minimum wage jobs are amazing and we should be happy with low pay. And if we're not, well, I mean, you can just go out and get a better paying server job somewhere else. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, he did say, if you want more pay, do a better job and a better restaurant will want you. Again, it, that's not how it works. Well, if you're just nice to people, then they'll tip you better and you'll make a lot of money. Not true. Not true at all. I mean, here's the thing. The reliance on tipping you realize that puts the responsibility of paying a server a fair wage onto the customer, not the company, but you're shifting that burden, that cost burden onto the customer. Isn't it better to pay, you know, and more fair to pay a living wage to everybody and eliminate tipping altogether? I mean, me, uh, that makes sense to me. I know that there's some servers that are like, no, 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 you don't understand. I actually make more with tips. Perhaps you do, but again, it's sort of uneven, right? Uh, there are servers that end up with a lot less, uh, and there's also tip pooling, like I said before. Um, it seems a little bit more stable because then you're not relying on the customer to supplement your wage. And by the way, uh, the other uh, you know argument that's always uh, against minimum wages, well, they're going to pass it into the customers anyway, that, that extra cost. What do you think tipping does? Tipping also passes the cost on to the customer. And so any price increase, and this has been borne out in studies too, would actually be a lot less than any prospective tip anyway. So keep that in mind. Uh, so now, uh, look, there's plenty of ridiculous things. Uh, one is when, of course, uh, where they included McDonald's in uh, you know, what would be considered a tipped restaurant. Have you ever been to McDonald's? You don't tip at McDonald's. What McDonald's has ever had you leave a tip for the server who, yes, normally makes minimum wage? I, I mean, I, do they even know any real people outside their social bubble, outside their class? Have they ever talked to a person working at McDonald's? Of course not. Of course, they have no idea. Uh, that, you know, McDonald workers don't get, uh, you know, they don't get tipped. They also don't even know how much the tipped minimum wage is. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Ducey, right? So, so Ducey, Steve Ducey, not a smart person, right? Obviously not somebody who knows anything about what he's talking about. He said that... Um, Currently, and I did not realize this, the federal minimum wage for tipped employees is two thirteen an hour. He didn't know that. He didn't know that. Oh come on, man! Don't you think that would be required reading? Something that you should know if you're going to have a conversation on the minimum wage. Oh, but of course not. It's Fox News. <laughs> of course. It's Fox and Friends, so yeah, they're not going to know. Their entire audience is mostly out-of-touch boomers and wealthy people. They don't know what it's like in today's economy. They still think it's the same as back in their day, where you could work your way up in the company, and that these jobs were made for high school students and college students, that you could pay your college tuition but just working at McDonald's for the summer. No, that's not how it works anymore. Now what we have is that we have a service sector because we no longer have a large manufacturing base like we used to, most of the jobs are in the service sector, right? Uh, most of the jobs are minimum wage or very, very close to minimum wage. It, it's not the same. We have people in their 30s with families that are trying to survive because good jobs, good paying jobs are no longer here or are not accessible without expensive college degrees and or, and or years of experience gained from unpaid internships. And who can do unpaid internships? Well, of course, people who are already set, people who are already fairly wealthy. They have a huge, huge advantage. That is the reality in today's economy. And while there is a good demand in people for people in skilled trades, where pay is actually pretty good, not everybody can do those jobs. Let me give you an example. I will use myself as an example. So I used to work in a factory, right? 
Uh, and I, <laughs> there are welding jobs all over the place, right? So welders, they make good pay. I can't weld to save my life. I know because I literally set myself on fire. I am not cut out for that job. I, my welds were terrible and I caught myself on fire, literally. I, I can't do that job. That's not the job for me. That's not a job for people with very poor spatial reasoning or any type of natural clumsiness, when I, which I, of course, have in spades. Um, some jobs people can't do. And so, look, that, that's, that's really the kind of the point, right? Oh, you can just go get another job that pays better. No, no, you can't, because not everybody can do those different jobs. Everybody has different skills. Everybody has different things that they're actually good at. And so they have to find a job that they're actually good at that they can actually do. And that's not always available. And if it is, if it happens to be you know, making food, you know, preparing food or serving food, that is what you're good at, then why should you be consigned to a life of poverty because of your natural skill set? I just don't understand, right? So, and, 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 and that goes, of course, to why do we look down on people who prepare and serve food. I mean, that a job's a job's a job, right? It should pay the minimum that an adult needs to survive because most of the people working in these jobs are adults and they do have families. And so what they're saying on Fox News, oh, these jobs are just for kids. Well, if they're just for kids, then how come there are so many adults that are stuck working in them despite these conditions? Oh, they just want these jobs to be forever jobs. You ever wonder why? Because nobody I talk to at McDonald's likes working at McDonald's or wants to have a career at McDonald's uh, working the drive through for the rest of their lives. Nobody wants to make a career out of that, but they're in that position because they have no other choice. And so at least if we're going to make, you know, have an economy where, most, where, where a lot of these people are in jobs they, they might hate, uh, but they're stuck in, at least we want to make sure that they don't have to be broke and, and completely destitute while doing these jobs. So it is time to lift the wage. It's time for America to have some economic justice. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.